Hey, everybody. Welcome to another interview. I have today with me the man of the legend, Thomas Gabriano, or Garbarino, Thomas Gabarino. I get that right. He did. He did. So this incredible man, this incredible hero is someone I get to spend time weekly with every single week in our group, the Starkind Alliance. He, he is a mind-body specialist uh, specializing in healing, assisting other individuals in healing so-called incurable diseases, everything from uh, cancer to autoimmune disorders to infertility, all with just consciousness and energy in the body. And so, you know, as the world is burning and everybody thinks everything is going to hell in a handbasket, we're talking about miracles every single day and incredible possibilities and how things really work. And Thomas has an incredible light to bring and I wanted to bring him on the show. So welcome, brother. Thank you. Thank you. This beautiful introduction. Yeah. You know, part of the reason why I wanted to have you on and why I'm so passionate about this is because, well, everything that just happened in the world over the past four and a half years, mm -hmm. this massive ignorance of what medicine actually is and what is possible. And I just see this incredible breakthrough happening right now. That's just, just starting. It's so small with mind, body healing and what's actually possible. And what you do is you, you help people create miracles. People come to you with incurable diseases, people that have been told they're going to die or they, there's no hope for them. They've tried a million things and you help them heal. So how do you, how do you do that? Where does that start? Yeah, it's, it's, um, first off, uh, let me just say it's amazing to be here with you, man, brother. I, I love, uh, so much of the work you're also doing in, on the world and the planet. And we'll obviously touch a little bit more on that today, but, um, it's an honor to be here with you, bro. Um, how do I create miracles? Not well, I, or how do I help people heal in this kind of miraculous way? It's really, um, not not to you know oversimplify it but it's really not me you know you could say it's many years of of me doing the inner work doing the cultivation to be really just a vessel um of of light you know of consciousness that we all are and being willing to go into those places that don't feel good right the pain points the the places that we hurt and just getting really good at feeling them with my heart and transmuting them into uh, a different form and first it just started with me with my own healing and then you know, my background, I, I was a clinician, acupuncturist, Chinese medicine, which I still do. Um, and what I started to find was doing that work, um, there was a way, initially I was doing it more from just my intellectual mind, like most people. You know, you, you pick up, you learn a skill, and you're applying that skill with critical judgment and understanding you know differential diagnosis and stuff like that it works great but then what started happening was i started feeling more right the classic story and a lot of empaths and healers and practitioners i just started to feel more and i just started to be brave enough to communicate that even if it felt like it came out of left field you know and then just building up uh, that rapport with my clients till they started to feel more comfortable in me exploring this realm with them. And then really shifting my work from you come to me, I help you with these tools. Now the dynamic change to we come together and we explore the space, whatever that is, if it's you're feeling anxious in the moment or you're feeling sad um maybe had some loss recently whatever it is we use that as a trailhead i like to say to take us into a deeper experience of ourselves and from there man it, you know 
that's really takes us into that place of miracles. And so someone's happens. This, I'm familiar with this work, but let's just like backpedal a little bit. How do sure. we get, I, I've got cancer to, we, we felt through some emotions and all of a sudden that disappearing, like let, let's say, I don't, <laughs> I don't know nothing about mind body medicine. How does. Yeah. 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 So a lot of people's consciousness today and has been in the past is like, this is, uh, I don't know. It's like I had this conversation the other day with the client and it's almost like there's this idea that cancer just like happens randomly. You know, it just like shows up and it's only a matter of time before it shows up for you, you know? And um, when we explore it through the mind body medicine, we see that the body is, is really an instrument, right? Of vibration, of incredible intelligence through our physiology, the communication. And so say like we, I don't know, maybe we were abandoned as a child. Um, that's a message that we carry subconsciously in not just our mind, but in the tissues of the body. So somebody's, uh, I don't know, circulatory system the way it functions, like when I listen to their pulses, let's say, there's a constriction in the whole, not just the heart, but the whole system it has this like bracing for doom, like someone's going to leave me at any moment, you know? So our what I'm trying to say is those experiences that shape our mind are really the things that condition the body into being in this state of health or wellness or, or not. And when you start seeing that, like you and I have, it's a no brainer. It's like, oh, okay. The, the, the overwhelming sensation I'm getting in this space is fear. So for most of us, you know, cancer can feel or something like cancer can feel like this bomb that just gets dropped on us in this kind of random situation like there's no causation to it but when you start to really study mind body medicine you start to understand that uh there's no mistakes in this that the feelings and thoughts you've been having and experiences in life shape who you are physically emotionally and of course spiritually so when cancer just shows up, you get the diagnosis. Uh, it is a warning sign, right? That something within the body, the messaging, like what we are either consciously saying or most often unconsciously saying, is is gotten to a certain threshold where the body's like enough, right? So, like I use example of abandonment where someone's constantly in this surveillance of like, when are they going to leave me? Like, when is, when is that shoe going to drop? Like that energy is a message, is a vibration in the body. And that affects the cells, the function of the cells, the function of the nervous system, the ability to drop into a deeper state of relaxation or not. And over time, that will again, cause the body to hold on to toxicity longer. And cancer loves that. It's a breeding ground for that. And so for a lot of us that, let's say you are someone listening and you do have a cancer diagnosis, what I would say is this is the wake-up call for you, right? This is the moment where you know, God's giving you this opportunity to really look deeper, like look beyond your everyday activities or functions or habits. And, and let's really dive deeper into what's going on inside you and how can we ship, how can we shape and, and change that into a new causation chain that will bring health and wellness. So really to answer your question, what we do is we look at, we identify those fundamental things that a person is maybe not so conscious of initially like, oh, I'm always thinking 
you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's going to be a bad day or, you know, uh, you know, I, I, every time I try to put myself out there in the dating world, I just get slammed. So I just start to go into this depressed place, you know, um, whatever those messages are, we start to unpack them. And we do that through a variety of different ways until you are able to release some of that, you know, stickiness, I'd say that your, your consciousness loves to connect to because it's familiar and then bring in a new, new vision, a new way of feeling and experiencing yourself. And often that alone can be an incredible chain of healing that will cause spontaneous healing. So we're talking about causation chains. Yeah. But also diving deep. And I have heard of this work for many, many years, you know, through the drip vines or whatever you say. And I always kind of just put it off into this bucket of like, oh, that's the Louis L. Hay positive thinking stuff. And of right. course, Joe just bringing out a whole other um and the whole world for people right now he's opening up with his work but what i'm experiencing in my life and i'm sure you experience this with your clients as well is this this is a little bit different it's it's really about feeling and understanding that presencing something alone like literally just being present for the deepest darkest nightmares in your body that's the actual healer and that that is the source point and a connection to the miracle yeah. itself and you kind of just have to get out of the way of yeah. that right and i want to hear your take on it because a lot of people come to this work and they're like oh i've tried that before or i've done all this trauma healing or i've done this thing and that energy work but if there's ever and it's always usually the case this it's very subtle like assumption that i'm doing that to make that thing go away that that itself is is the is the blocker would you find that to be true absolutely 100 percent. um i think even in the alternative health mind body medicine world there is a crisis of doership i'll just call it that you know where i feel like enough of us have not allowed the presence as you're calling it, you know, I call it a Holy Spirit, whatever you want to put a name on it, where we are truly feeling in, in communion with that presence. Oftentimes, like for example, I'll, I'll walk somebody through, um, you know, I said uh, like a trailhead where they start, you know, like, ah, oh, man, I've just been having like, really bad days recently. I don't know what it is. I'm waking up, I'm feeling really shitty. And okay, well, let's explore that, you know, and we, and we explore that and we start feeling into those tendencies that are there in the body. And then they start releasing. And then a lot of times the client's like, okay, I'm done. Let's move on to that. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, let's park ourselves in this presence let your cells soak it up, right? Like truly just allow that to, to, you know, change you, to move you rather than onto the next thing, which I say is another form of doership. And we really have to surrender in the, in the most completely way in that. And then be willing to stay there for, however long you know till we feel the our hearts like have that change and then we know like we're ready to step into something new what do you mean by the heart Actually, yeah should... yeah so our i love the arabic word for um heart is kalb and it means that which turns right so if you think about it at any moment our heart is our our truest nature of of who we are in relation to consciousness and the heart at least the more egoic version of our heart there's different layers of it um 
is constantly turning to different aspects of our perception. And most often than not, I think you can agree with this, most of us, our heart is turned in a way that is solely identified as our egoic structure. Mm. And part of the work that I think you, you can relate to is, is that when someone is able to release that identification and just be willing to be led, be just led in that moment, the heart turns its way back to the love, turns its way back to God, turns its way back to however you want to presence that. But in that, so much changes. You know, we talked about messaging in the body. So when that happens, it's like the light comes in and that's the catalyst for the change. Again, I'm not the one doing it. It's it's really, you know, the Holy Spirit that's coming in and doing it for us. But but there's, you know, like I feel like God, we have free will. So if you're consistently identified with your egoic structure, it's it's not going to enter it's there, but it's not going to um force you into experience of communion it's going to just wait for when you're ready you know and just give you opportunities in life that reflect that causation connected to the egoic structure until you're ready to have that aha moment and when that happens that's really the the bridge that and within that there's tremendous healing that's that's the gateway to the miraculous i'd say Wow, man, you're dropping so many, so many truth bombs there. So I love the image of the heart turning. Yeah. Like it's the image I get is like turning away from the source. Yeah. And then all of a sudden turning back. And you know, when you have that aha moment, when you have that moment where everything just shifts, when you go from your head to your heart, when you finally allow the thing that you haven't been allowing, if when you finally embrace the thing that you haven't been embracing, when you finally just slow down and you go, okay, this is it there's just that click yeah i once went on a binge just watching like joe dispenza's testimonials on like the, the seminar and hearing people come up and tell their stories of healing you know i was in a wheelchair i had cancer i had this i had diabetes and and, and their stories and they always usually go like this you know i started doing the work i would i was doing meditation or all this stuff and nothing was really working and i kind of got results but then i went backwards and then I just gave up, but I kept on feeling yeah. and all of a sudden the miracle happened yep. <laughs> and it all disappeared. Right? The tumor was gone, everything. Right. And I know you experience this all the time. Or... Yeah. There's exactly. some, the Go gateway ahead. to the miraculous. So how do you open that? It's, it's, I mean, it's the million dollar question, you know, I think on one level, we're not in control of that. You know, we can we can try to will it. But then again, it's it's like who's the one doing the willing, you know? And that's where a lot of people get stuck or they get dis disenchanted, you know, they feel like, ah, oh, you know, God, why aren't you listening to me? You know, like um it's that release mechanism of our doership of the, the the thinker of the thought you know it's it's the one that is seeing a world of separation you know and when we are able to put that to rest whatever it is you know like that you know where you get to that point where you're just like fuck it and you just let go that's when there's an opening, right? Because otherwise there's just interference, man. You know, you know, it's like there's just interference with all that, all these thoughts. And even if they're good thoughts, they're just they're interfering, right? And then once we just like, I don't know anymore, right? Let me just feel, let me just be with what's here, you know, as you said, and not have a directionality put on top of it. Just be with it. 
you know? I mean, that alone, bro, is so powerful. I, I can't tell you how many people, I mean, this is a this is the crux that I have to help folks with each and every client because this is the moment where they get stuck, you know, and they're like, God, I'm eating everything right. I'm doing everything right. I'm like, yeah, can we just feel that for a moment? Can we feel that one that's hurting, you know? And but you told me, you know, if I do this and this and this, right, I'm going to heal, you know? And it's like, yep, I know. Let's just feel. You know? And the ones that are able to really drop in and feel that, feel that pain, feel that, I don't know, that uncertainty, that's where the magic happens. And it's just like you said in those testimonials, like all of a sudden, boom, cancer is gone. We're, we're taking it down from super scientific you know and, and endorphins and cortisol levels and all that's all the chemical compounds that happen you know that we can explain this scientifically of course with i don't think this discussion is going there but it all boils <laughs> down to fuck it i don't know anymore yeah and i think that that's the scariest thing we all really really want to control i mean doesn't it so relate to love too like when you open your heart up to somebody you just fuck like i i love you right i boom like that's sometimes the scariest thing you can do because mm. that person may not love you back or that person may not you know have the same feelings but putting yourself out there in that way of vulnerability is so fucking powerful I've recently gone through that, so I can concur. It's extremely scary. Yeah, there's a rapture. There's an openness. There's a there's a strength that you know, even if it hurts, I'm willing to feel it because the opening is is real. Yeah, and it makes me think of like, you know, I I come from like a a Sufi tradition where you know, just people just like the, that same quality, they talk about falling in love with, with the unity, you know, in a way where they just completely are naked in it. It's the same thing, you know, and that's where those profound miracles happen, whether they're in your healing or in your life or the mountains literally moving, you know, it's like, that's, that's, that's it, you know? You talk about this one thing in your essence, which is the, the literacy of the heart, that a big part of the healing process is actually assisting people with relearning the literacy of the heart. Tell, tell me what that is. Yeah, so kind of similar to what we were talking about with the heart's always turning, there is um, a different perception, let's say, of each of those stages of who I am, what I am, right? Who I am, I'm, I'm a guy, I, I do this healing work, I live here at this place, um, my father, all that, right? Versus like what I am, right, is you know, it's hard to put into words, right? But just like an infinite being that is connected to source. There's many stops along that bridge between those two and, and, and experiences too. And, and so when we are going through, say something like I have an autoimmune disorder and we're walking through these places in the heart, what you're developing is an understanding of the language of how the heart and your ego interact with each other and noticing the tendencies in which how your mind pulls you back into ego, right? Or how the heart lets go. And it's very nuanced for each and every person. Like that's really my job as a facilitator of healing is to understand like where are those pitfalls where your heart gravitates towards those egoic tendencies 
and how can we create structures in place that help you disidentify in a very soft, you know, like um, opening way. And over time, there's like a language that you start to feel, right? You're like, and and you know, like it's a very common thing where you know, like you see the Zen master up in front of the room, and you know. All of a sudden he says something and then he's just like laughing at himself, you know, because he's he has such a profound understanding and literacy of his heart or her heart in a way that it's like, oh, there you go again, you know, and like tracking. It's it's really that, yeah, I'd say it's a lot of like that inner tracking of how this dynamic play of of ego of separation and unity separation and unity and where you are in relationship to that and you know every time you let's say laugh at yourself you know about like oh you're getting really upset over this little minute thing like ha 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 you know like that's a release back to unity you know and so you just get more and more um of a better understanding of how you and your heart speaks and it all happens differently for each and every person and that's that's why i i, I feel like it's so um interesting for me as a witness to everyone's process and we can get so disconnected from that heart speak you say yes. that's a big cause causation chain of the disease that you see in people and this i mean we are i feel like i mean i'd love to hear your take on it from your perspective but i feel like we are at a threshold humanity on our planet right now where and i think this speaks to what you're saying the last four years where we are like up against the wall and there's really only two ways we can go we can continue to ascend up through into our hearts and become the co-creators with unity consciousness, or we can solidify and concretize into those darker, I don't want to say darker, but just, just like egoic tendencies of humanity that have been a part of our tendency for the last, you know, thousand years you know, greed, you know, struggle, uh, wars. And, you know, I, I said the other day to a client, um, cause they were very upset about what's going on in the middle East. And I was like, what if there was no bad guys? Right. Cause they were kind of holding that reality. Oh, we're the good guys. They're the bad guys. And it's like, what if there's no bad guys, you know? It was a little hard for them to rock that, but like there's those of us that have the vision now that like there are no bad guys on this planet. There's bad actions and bad tendencies, but people aren't bad. And I think that can be a catalyst for more peace and and connection with people that seemingly have a different culture and a different place or seem threatening or you know, and so I, I think as to your question, like, I feel like we are being pushed into our hearts, whether we want to or not. And I, I mean, it's been amazing. It's been incredibly challenging at times, but at the same time, it's, it's like the heart opening experiences has just been wild. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so what about you? What what do you feel like? Well, this is this is like bringing up a lot of things that I'm I'm happy we're going to get into now. So I'm kind of wearing two hats in this interview, just me you, you and I hanging out all the time, which you know, <laughs> for hours, but if someone's watching this, you know, a, a lot of feedback I get from the videos I watch I mean, I, I make uh, people come to me and they're like, well, I just love your energy, you know, and then we do some work and they get healed and stuff mm -hmm. ships in their lives. I'm sure you get that all the time, right? Yeah. But just if you're, if you're new to this world, you can watch this also with a hint of doubt. Like, oh, this is just some hippie, fluffy love, heart. It's all going to solve everything. Yeah. And 
the heart's no joke. It's not, it's not this fluffy, I love everything. There's no bad guys. It's not that. There's no bad guys like put my head, you know, my hands over my eyes and don't see. It's that's not what you're saying. No. You know that. It's that I'm willing to have my heart broken so deeply and still be present for every ounce of pain here that I feel you and me as one. Yeah. And that takes serious balls and courage and a lot of breathing and life experience. And that's the that's where that energy and that compassion that you I know you channel to your clients comes from, right? I know that is true for me. I've had a very variety of life experiences and gone down this work to to lead me into that and with some amazing teachers as well to just to just be present for the un unimaginable. I was recently in a taxi with some friends and we were talking about this with one of my great friends and she's like, you know, the ego always loves to be the hero and the hero always likes to make bad guys. <laughs> like the hero needs a bad guy to vanquish. And I started cracking up laughing because I turned to my friend immediately and I was like, wow, that actually makes me feel like a douchebag right now with my own process. <laughs> I have just been through, I was like, just been through something and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm making myself the hero in this thing. <laughs> because we need that polarity, right? Yeah. And so what happens if there's, there's none of that polarity and how can we redefine a hero? And you've inspired me with this a few days ago. Remember I wrote something about it. I was thinking about it. I used to think that like heroes were just people that ran into burning buildings and did heroic actions and had no fear. And that is heroic in its sense. But like, what is the essence of that? And I feel it has a lot to do with what you're touching upon in your work with, you put it so eloquently, when you're put into a position where you have to let go of your egoic conditioning, that's when the miracle actually happens. Yeah. And I started to think about that. Isn't that what a hero really does? Absolutely. As a man or woman that, like if you look through everything in our past, the, all the wars, the American Revolution, the Civil War, any any war on the planet, that the French Revolution, anything that's a revolution, it mm. never led to a change or a, a freedom, mm. maybe in some senses, but not lasting peace. Yeah. But evolution, that's a different thing. And any man or woman who has actually created a change on this planet it's always just been a, a humble individual that just saw things a little bit differently. And they just held a simple question of like, okay, I know this is the egoic conditioning that says we're fucked, but there's this little sliver of light. And I just want to point your attention to this thing. And that goes, <laughs> yeah. can, can shift the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said it. Um, a lot of people aren't aware of that. Like Martin Luther King was completely terrified or, or was like insecure to go up and, and give his speech that he gave so famously, right, in DC. And people were obviously like, you got to do this, man. You're like, you're amazing. You're doing this. But some part of him had to die to do that. You know, the part of him that felt less than or lack or whatever. And I think that is the, the first step to heroism you know like even even let's say the, the 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 most notable like batman running into a falling building where people are in you know just going head first into it like some part of him has to let go of that survival fight or flight mechanism that the ego just loves putting us in to take that step to be in the unknown that's it man and love can bring you there exactly and that's that's the part of getting into the heart that i don't think a lot of people experience because we think it's this fluffy thing yeah and that's just one aspect of it but courage 
that kind of courage, that divine courage of I will meet my death because I see what else is possible. And I, that's a, I kind of live for that. And life's been taking me deeper and deeper into those places. And recently something happened to me that I didn't expect at all. I just out of the blue fell deeply in love with someone. And it went so fast. It was so powerful that it just brought me to my knees and I'm still kind of like recovering from it. <laughs> in fact, that sounds funny, but, uh, <laughs> but it was beautiful and deeply painful at the same time. And I got to this place. I was just walking on a beach where I started to feel into, I'm feeling this now a lot, like just my death of realizing, okay, this, this incredible longing, this incredible love, it's in a sense unfulfillable because even if you know if some if, if, even if it goes the way I, I want it to it's like it's not i don't know if i'm making sense but like there's a deep deep longing for the divine in it through someone and it shed away a lot of this egoic tendencies in me I, this incredible pain that I, I was feeling of like okay life is short what the hell are you doing like if you if you're not living for this incredible adventure and this incredible courage in your life if i can't have this right yeah what the hell's the point of living what the hell's the point what the hell's the point of my life and i came to this point where i just said out loud is like god i'm ready to fucking die for the longest time i've been hanging on to this life a lot when i could thread just thinking oh well i i should stay alive because i have a kid or something like this sure and of course it's a great thing to do i'm not saying i'm suicidal or anything yeah um but she's older now she's like 15 almost so she's get to this point where it's like hi dad bye dad you know i'm like okay cool well, i guess you don't really need me there's not that biological like i gotta stay alive for this and um like, why the hell am I really here? What's what's my real mission right now? And and there's a deep, deep sense in me, and maybe you're feeling it, other people as well. Like, why have I come here? What what is there? What have I really here to do? Like, God, show me that thing. Let me please fully receive that mission and devote my fullness to it with this deep, deep love. Or let me die because I don't see the point. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? Am I gonna have like more coconuts? Yeah. more orgasms more like <laughs> what pleasure like I just, like yeah. let me hear so i don't know how we got there but that's 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 where that's bringing me the service and and devotion the, and the sufis call that himma it's like himma in your heart it's like this um there's so much sincerity in what you just said you know, and that's and and the unity, God, if you will, like loves that. When a heart, it's they, they say it's like they write about it as like the heart has become tender, tenderized mm -hmm. in a way, you know, to receive, right, the blessing. I thought of this funny meme the other day. I was talking to a friend where right? God always gives you like these packages and they're beautifully wrapped. And at first you mistake the gift for the wrapping. It's like, let me give you this thing. Look, it's a beautiful woman or it's a thing, an opportunity <laughs> or something. And you're like, wow, you're so excited. And then you unwrap the packaging and there's like a little card. It's an empty box and there's a card inside. It's like, no, this is an experience of detachment and the practice of <laughs> just like rising your heart. You will feel pain. You will feel great loss. Yeah. You will feel immeasurable grief, but you will know God. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's where i'm at I'm, I'm really feeling that sincerity that tenderness and that's yeah. how moments of great pain and grief and and the pre-miracle phase it gets you gets you you, you can get there but you got to yeah. stay open to the fact that you're 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 receiving a massive gift through whatever challenge you're experiencing right now and it's you know, you don't get what you expect, but you, it's going to be better than what you ever imagined if you're open to it, if you stay on the ride.
so much of it is just our own resistance to it, right? But if we can really accept that, like, whatever hit you couldn't have missed you, you know, it's like it was perfectly designed for you <laughs> in that moment to open up, hopefully, something more that you're actually your heart was ready for. Your ego definitely isn't ready for, but the heart is ready for. And um, just like you said, that is that is it. I mean, one of my teachers used to say all the time to me, the change happens long before you're aware of it. You know, it's like you're already healed, but you're like, the person's like, what? I just got my my scan back from the doctor. I have stage four, this type of cancer, and you're already healed, you know? It's like, but it's, the the tendencies of our egoic structure that really get in the way of that happening right then and there so a lot of my work is really just that interplay of that how much and the timing is really important the timing is super important and but it also happens fast right it's not like this massive journey like people people heal they they get better right it's really, it depends on the person. It, it, it's in, healing is instantaneous, right? I mean, I'm sure you've experienced uh, miracles instantaneously. Um, but a lot of times for some folks, the ego comes in and wants to try to figure it out and, did, 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 and then like things kind of hmm, come back to, you know, so, and it makes sense of what just happened, you know, and, but like it happened, you know. It can happen the inverse way too, where you you get presented a miracle for your life. Here, everything you've ever wanted. And you're like, no, I can't have it. <laughs> yeah, like, right. And like that <laughs> resistance to the to the goodness of that you're being presented with, like literally is becomes the disease of your life. And life will keep knocking on your head until you until you get it. Exactly. Keep trying to mess you up. Not, I'm trying to make it easier for you. I'm trying to remove the thing that, okay, you, you want to stay. Okay, keep staying in that thing. Okay, it really hurts, doesn't it? Okay, like get yep. out of it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so like you literally have to be there with people and be like, you don't you don't need that anymore. Just, yeah. just let go. Yeah. So where does this play into, into business and sharing? yourself out into the world you know that's a lot of the work we do together every week since you've come into the program of like freeing your transmission right and, and and getting out there in the world i'd love if you could share a bit more of that in your experience of having this gift that you know you have and then getting to the place where you are now where you're more and more fluidly stepping into your power and sharing it but so many people get into this trap of having something so beautiful to share on this time yeah. on the planet and knowing they've come here for this exact time. Mm -hmm. And then they go down a marketing vortex and, and spend all their money and get deeply frustrated with the business world. Yeah, I I've done plenty of that for sure. I mean, for me, I think it all comes back to, to self-love and really the confidence that what I've been given is really all that's needed. Um, so much of, you know, when I came to do things online business wise, uh, I felt such an insecurity about not necessarily what I have to offer, but how it had to be presented in a way whether it's through a video or a website or a funnel, whatever. And I displaced my power into other quote unquote experts, right? That they were like, no, 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 you need to do your video this way. This is the formula. You got to start out with this, then you do this, and then you do this, and then call to action and boom, just like that, right? Or no, you're doing your whole funnel wrong. It has to look this way or you got to market this way. And one of the beautiful things that came about in your group and the work with you, Casper, is is just <laughs> it, it parallels so well with what we're talking about here with healing and, and miracles is, is just trusting, right? 
that there's a process. It may not be so uh, crystal clear, you know, like, oh, you don't have your niche found out yet. Start there, you know, like nothing like that. It's just feeling into what is there, like what is there for you that is driving your heart to want to do this work, right? Like for me, there's always been this deep, deep longing to help those that are crying out suffering, you know, because I was in that place at one point in my life. And all I really need to do is speak to that, that place that my heart knows has experienced and just has so much compassion for and don't worry about all the details like just speak to that and authenticity will come through that right and that's your voice you know so rather than try to take a formula and oh they're saying it this way they're saying it that way oh this person's made you know seven figures a month i gotta follow there it must be successful like put all that aside right Sure, that can work, but I, I honestly sometimes I'm skeptical of it. You know, like how many people does that work for? I think it works for those people, it worked for them. But what works for you, I think, is start where your passion is, what's in your heart, and just speak to that. And it'll it'll sort itself out. The opportunities, the tools and resources you need will come as you just keep speaking to that. Yeah, there's so many nuances in what you're saying with, yeah. with very broad. For me, it has been a lot about letting go of this egoic conditioning of what it, what I think it has to look like. I've gone through like 20, 30, 20, 20 years of, of doing online marketing and I was just doing it a certain way and being a marketer. And there came a point where I just like let go of it all. And, and had some amazing teachers helping me along the way to recognize what well, you so aptly put on a call recently where it's the intangible space in your heart and your consciousness that's actually creating your outer space. Yeah. And if your intangible space is full of implicit feelings of grasping, of trying to make something happen, of I hope I have to pay the bills and not actually diving in and feeling that deep, deep scarcity and feeling deep inside of you that's the only thing that you're ever going to see on the outside so that you're going to constantly see graspiness and scarcity in the bank account and everything. And some incredible miracle takes place when we dive into those spaces and just let go of the outer structures of how things should look and just be like, I'm enough. I'm enough. Me and my energy is enough. And what would it take to actually create from that place of wholeness and wellness and mm. slowing down with life? And all of a sudden, like the right people show up into into your world, right? And the right moves start to make, which may make no sense on paper, but it makes perfect sense to the heart and mm. things start to work out. So what was this? Beautiful. Well, it's yeah. Kind of, just, you've been through uh, quite a journey with this thing, right? Because when you started, like you were quite stressed out with your business, even though you had this amazing gift. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even relatively recently, I'll share that. So I've I've been in somewhat uh, relatively big debt when I came to Casper's group. And I just had this kind of idea, right? Like I just got to make this much money and that will take care of me and supporting my family getting out of this debt. And... Going through this process every week with the group, it's just helped me be in that vibration, right? If you will, of those intangibles, right? Like there are some really concrete things, right, that we have to do. But as Casper's saying, like the more we can lean into those intangibles, that is where I believe God does the work for you effortlessly and relatively recently 
I was kind of, we had um, an issue with our home that needed construction, don't have the money, right? Then one of my best friends gets murdered and it just puts a stop, right, in your life when something like that happens. It's like, fuck it, I don't care. We could live in a, a hut down the street, you know? Like perspective again changes. And one of the beautiful things was um, I just had this, in that moment of grief and sadness and shock really, uh, I just had this very clear vision what I needed to do. And it was so crystal clear. It was like, take your son, my 15-year-old son, and go down there and just be with the family, just be in that space, just be there, right? Don't try to do anything, just be, like mm. you know how to be. And it was amazing, Casper, so it was so healing. But the amazing thing happened was, all of a sudden, all these clients just start showing up, all these people. I didn't do anything for my business, right? All these opportunities just started opening up in ways that I clearly didn't do. I mean, maybe I set up some the found foundational work to set that up, but like they just happened instantaneously all during that time. And so what that tells me is sometimes like when you're just trying to bang out a, you know, uh an email campaign or like instead just fuck it like go to the beach be with yourself go go swim in the waves like go go take a hike right go take a rest dude live life you know that we're supposed to and stuff will happen as a result of you being you right yeah I had this mind blowing epiphany yesterday cuz i've been here on the beach for 2 weeks now planning my next moves with life and and life kind of diverted me through an amazing serendipitous series of events and i was sitting in this hammock laying in this hammock and i had this epiphany i was like shit like i'm doing everything here except actually relaxing on the beach because i'm like <laughs> getting up in the morning <laughs> doing a ton of exercise and like trying to get, refocus my mind and my work and i had this epiphany it's like oh man i gotta actually like be here well, thanks for yeah. the reminder I mean, actually like commune with the ocean i mean i've i've had fun but it's like i could be having way more fun and relaxing a lot more and let's see yeah. a lot of more things start to really click into place that was a really powerful story for you with with what happened with your friend yeah, and the yeah. i remember you got on a call and you were like i have no clue what i'm doing and i was like good <laughs> <laughs> i remember that <laughs> bro it was so in that alone was like just felt so good to be witnessed in that place yeah. you know it just was confirmation that you gave me yeah just like you said fuck it i don't know anymore right the the, the portal it's like these constructs, these structures of our of our mental being that you know has a longing like oh I want to I want to be financially free or I want to like for me I want to retire my wife, you know. Um and we can get so locked into that in a way that again doership is trying being the one doing it. And it's almost like you know if like God is this whole screen here like that doership is like the tiniest little particle like in you know i'm just looking at your your back structure there like there on that beam you know and we're like i know what i'm doing i don't and it's like no you don't <laughs> <laughs> you <know? laughs> oh man i need to hear that now too for like um, the process i'm in at the moment so like yeah and it also like comes down, you mentioned debt. That's a really, really important one because money is a big, big factor. Like even like for some people I know watching this to me, like business, how can you be in the business of healing? It's all evil, right? Like 
<laughs> why, why do we have that resistance to it, right? Or I'm in debt. I have to get out of it, right? Well, do you? Like, what if you're so perfectly divinely supported right now? And, and that credit card or someone lending you money is actually part of you and you get to give them the joy of, of supporting you right now. And what would it take to just relax into this moment with that, to, re to release the urge to get out of it? Because when you keep wanting to get out of something, you, you basically, you're in the vibration of, I have to get out of something. Yeah. So there's never, there's never any light that can come in. They can yeah. crack open, right? The same thing with like, I got to heal my cancer. I got to clean my debt. I got to, I got to make <laughs> yeah, my business work. Ah, exactly. ah, like nothing ever fucking happens. Like, <laughs> fuck it. Show me a different way. That, that dude, I, let me just say like the, the medicine you gave me early on and continue to, you, you, you said it so beautifully. I, I probably butcher, but it was basically like, they're just a bunch of zeros going one way. And what if they were the other way? And it's just like, or or you said like, uh, I don't know, like a pink elephant on a unicycle. You know, it's just like thought. It's just a thought you're having about this experience. But I'm making it mean so much, right? I'm like, oh my God, like if I don't pay this, right? Da, 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 everything else is going to fall to shit, you know? And I'm a failure. I'm not a good provider and all those stories, right? The narratives that we are, telling ourselves of course how are you gonna how are you gonna let some new opportunity come in or wealth or abundance if you're stuck in that cycle as you're saying mm -hmm. and you help me crack that because like i feel dude i was the guy like who paid my credit card always on time right never let it get out of whack you know where i was paying credit card debt now i'm tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt i don't care dude i i used that used to literally like wake me up in the middle of the night with night sweats you know i don't care anymore now, i'm not sign up, sign up for casper's program you're gonna get massively in debt <laughs> you're not gonna own well, anything well I, let me just preface it i was already in debt the same amount when I came to Casper's program. Nothing has changed. Um, well, I don't want to say things have changed. Obviously, it's being paid down, but my relationship to it is so radically different. And I know, like, I have this is the key, guys, is I have the faith that it will change. And I don't know how that's going to happen whether it's through my online business or someone hands me a lottery ticket to win or Bitcoin goes to, you know, 1 million, whatever it is. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to happen. And that's okay. Probably the Bitcoin. Yeah. Probably the Bitcoin at this, this point, point. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sign up for this program. You're going to, you're going to get massively in debt. You won't have a clue what you're doing anymore, but you'll be happy. You'll help a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. But guys, it's so fucking liberating. That's the key. You know, like, um, shoot, there was a story you told also. Uh, I'm forgetting it now. Anyway, we all want, the truth is we all, at least for me, I want to be feel free. And I thought it was those things out there, like, no debt, having cash flow, having all this success in my online business. Sure. But what I've come to is it's it's an inner it's an inside game, you know? I feel that now. I feel more liberated. I feel more free inside. So I I tr again I trust that that will just because my thoughts and my feelings are co-creating my reality. So now that I've changed that, I know for certain that things will change out there. And they already have. Because again, going back to causation chain, I changed that inside myself. So the effects are going to come naturally. It's just, it's just like when? Tomorrow, if not tomorrow, next week, next month. It'll right. happen. Yeah. And it happens more and more the more you step into like your fullest, like next passion, next, next excitement, the highest, like, yes this thing then just 
yeah, starts to explode from there. And it's it's the same for healing. It's mm-hmm. the exact same thing for healing. It's all connected. Yeah, a lot of people think this is just just in the body, but your business, your relationships, your health, it's all the same thing. It's all in the body. Yeah. Wealth really starts in the body as well. Yeah. Like, um, Kim really helped me, Kim DeRamo, with this understanding of like nothing can ever shift until you get more into connection with yourself. And so when you're in debt, so-called, or when you're in a bad financial situation, we tend to think that we the, the solution is to get out of those feelings. And so we'll do everything to scramble and, and hustle and try to get mm-hmm. out of there, which never really gets you out. You get into a different type of uh, debt, energetic debt mm-hmm. that way, right? But the solution actually isn't facing the feelings, right? The, the I'm a piece of shit, I'm terrible. And that, that because that's actually what's present and that's actually what's in the moment. And and it's not the debt that hurts. It's the, it's the shame or the pain. What if we replace debt with people help me? I'm so helped yeah. with these many zeros. I have access to all that. <laughs> it's really what does a number on you, right? When we start doing the money transmutation stuff, like you just yeah. like you, you get to the work because you think, oh, I'm going to do this. So I get over my money beliefs and there, then there'll be more money, which does happen, but you don't actually care, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm exactly. Deep, deeper and deeper into that. It's like deeper layers of fear will come up. Yeah. Like, even into those and relax and um, get excited about something. And someone comes along and they're like, look, here's, bunch of money want to join your thing cool. right Great. let's do some work together yeah well man it's it's been a freaking pleasure to have you on and, and just dive into this conversation is there anything else you want to share um messages? is it this is for the group this is for you um It's funny, like I <laughs> sometimes, you know, God, God has such a a funny sense of humor. Um, in some ways, I thought, you know, doing the quote unquote spiritual work would would take me closer to God, but actually, I think the work with finances <laughs> working with that has actually done that more <laughs> in a way and and that's really a, a tribute to what we've done here in this group you know it's like for some reason for me personally i don't know maybe because of my upbringing the things i was told about money and finances and you know, be a good father, you have to have this and that and that. Like all of that was so a part of me and I was so unconscious to how I was holding it. And it was really this big block. Um, And one of the best things or blessings that's come to me doing this work with you, Casper, is just, like I said before, it was like releasing so much of that Again, I'm not saying everyone needs to go into debt and and that, but like I liberated those fears, those those tendencies of my mind that kept me in a prison. And we all have our version of that prison. And one of the best things about this group is every week you are being you're connecting with people that are also working out their prisons. And and really getting this incredible support and validation and it's okay. It's okay to put it down. It's okay to step in that unknown. Like you don't know what the fuck is gonna happen next. And that's okay. And if you trust that a little bit each time, like we said, miracles will start happening. So thank you, Casper. Well, thank you, Thomas. It's been a pleasure to have you here. You guys, if you enjoyed this conversation, I highly recommend working with Thomas if you or a family member, someone you know, needs help with 
curing autoimmune disease or cancer, or if you've been trying to get pregnant for a while and, and it's not working, this man is a miracle facilitator. And uh, he's the real deal. Check out the link down below and in the description if you want to get to his site. All his details are down below. And if you're interested in, in, in working in our group and finding out what we're doing, we basically have a group every single week where uh, you get to meet and hang out with people like Thomas, people who are making miracles around the world happen through sharing their medicine on the planet. If you feel like you've got all the pieces of the puzzle uh, and you've been working on yourself for years and trying to make the business and the money part of it work and you're ready to say, fuck it, I don't know anymore and try something new <laughs> and, and really make shit actually work in your life and have fun doing it and just commune and be yourself. Do this in a fun, easeful way. Uh, the link is down below. It's the starkindalliance.com or the sale of stars. We're setting up adventures all around the world too as well in meetings with this so thanks for watching links are down below thanks thomas see you guys Thank later you.